Welcome to PowerPointSkills.com and uh, this discussion of a free template that we have for you. You can pick up your own copy of this template at www.powerpointskills.com. Just register, it's totally free and you can download this presentation and be using it um, later today. So first of all we have a, a very clean slide with a little spot for our logo uh, at the top here uh, presented to our customer name here XYZ Stores and a title of the presentation itself. Okay, we then go into an agenda. Now rather than have a you know, separate slide uh, spelling out a quite detailed agenda, what we do here is just cover the general concepts and what I've put here is a series of interactive buttons that will take us to each of those pages during the presentation. A nice way to manage your way through a presentation so everyone can see where you are and what's happening at the time. Um, so the first thing we would do after just stepping through the introduction, uh, through the agenda I should say, um, is, is we would also ask if there is anything else that anyone wanted um, covered that we haven't included here. We could certainly make a note of that. So during the introductions, one of the things we want to do is go around the table, allow everyone a chance to introduce themselves, or if it's on a web conference, uh, doing the same thing, and ask people what's the number one thing that they would like to make sure that we cover during the presentation. Um, if we haven't covered everything in the slides that we've prepared, at least we can put those things on a whiteboard and address them uh, while we're still in the room. Um, and uh, even follow up with additional information if need be. So that's very important. The next thing we want to do is just let them know of our understanding of the organization, the fact that we've done some research. We know from their website that they uh, talk about consistency in their sales presentations, quality, their conversion rates, um, the generation of revenue and the fact that they, they place their customers at the center of their universe. So we demonstrate that we know a little bit about this organization and what drives them. Very important in a business presentation to demonstrate some um, level of understanding and if possible expertise in the industry or the type of organization that we're talking to. The next thing we go to is current issues. Now in this particular case I've just invented something called significant barriers to entry. Um, if we say for example XYZ stores are trying to get into new areas, uh, maybe new markets, uh, possibly overseas, and we're going to have a discussion around the difficulties that they're facing, but rather than have a whole bunch of bullet points, I've got a very simple image here of the Great Wall of China that kind of uh, demonstrates those, those sorts of barriers uh, fairly clearly. It's a great uh, metaphor. Um, then we would go to our approach to resolving those kinds of issues. Now we know that part of the issues that they're having are to do with the way their sales team operate, uh, the lack of consistency and so on, uh, um, low conversion rates and what we want to do is talk to them about how um, their sales team are separated from their customers but by working with powerpointskills.com for example in this case we could help them to close some of those gaps. Now on the um, slides here I've got some little interactive buttons here that allow me to go out and talk about each of these items in some detail. So if I click on the little plus sign here it takes me out to talk about the sales team. Now the way I've set this slide up is that um, I can click anywhere on this slide and it will take me back to the menu but I've also put a little return button here so that people can see what I'm doing. So I'll hit return and it takes me back to that slide. Same thing when I go to talk about um, um, our role in potentially helping them um, solve uh, the issues that they have and then talking about what that will mean to their customers um, if they take that action and uh, improve their presentation skills, their PowerPoint skills and so on. So I've covered the, the approach that we would take to helping them uh, solve those issues. We then go to, after that discussion, we then want to go to next steps. One of the great failures of salespeople is to actually set up um, an action plan of what actually happens next and put some time frames around it. And you should also try to name the people that are going to do things. Um, who is going to do this? So assess the need for training, an internal survey of managers. Um, that should take week one and week two uh, over the next month to, uh, to do that. And if we identified someone in the room, we should say, well, that might be the people in the uh, sales organization, the sales management team that do that, um, or sales operations, for example. So 
we would want to talk about who would do that in this little action plan that we have here. Finally, after working through what's going to happen after this presentation, we then go to a conclusion where we talk about uh, particularly some key benefits and we leave the presentation open for questions um, and any additional information that they might need. So we, we definitely want to finish and just leave that image of key benefits um, sitting there so that um, those kinds of um, things uh, really sink into the minds of our prospects. Now if you accidentally click further, I've just got a very simple black slide here that says end presentation and I've got a link here that takes you back right to the very start, um, back to the, the agenda um, if you accidentally click on that. But that's a great way of then just going to anywhere you want to within the presentation very quickly. They might, for example, go back. To, want you to go back to the approach slide, then you can do that very quickly. So that's a quick snapshot of how the, uh, the presentation looks. What I want to show you now is just a, uh, just a couple of um, things that have been built into this, um, into this presentation. So on these buttons here, the way that we're linking to the slides, if you right click, you can edit the hyperlink and you can see that this links to a place in this document and it actually links to slide 3 and it shows you a little diagram of the slide that it's linking to. So that's the way that we link to another slide here. If we look at this one here, let's look at the uh, edit hyperlink and that's linking to slide 4 and you can see where that button links to. So that's very simply how we uh, link to those uh, particular slides. Now there's another trick here that is a bit um, is a bit tricky. If you remember when we went to um, this slide here where we had these interactive buttons, um, and again if we look at those, let's take a look at the hyperlink here that's going out to slide 10. I mentioned that you could click anywhere on slide 10 and it would return you back to that page. Now I've done that in a couple of ways. I've got a return button here with a hyperlink that takes us back to slide 6, which is the, uh, the graphic here with the little plus signs. But also I've got another frame here um, that sits over the top of this slide just under this return button. And you'll see here I can't actually get to the text. Um, I, if I drag that across here, then you can see that little outline. Um, then now I can edit the text um, I can also change the image there, but this is actually invisible. Now what I've done here is I have hyperlinked that invisible box back to slide 6. So if anyone clicks anywhere on this slide, this is sitting over the top of the text, over the top of the graphic, um, it will take them back to slide 6. Now I'll just delete that and show you how we created that. So all I did here was I went to my shapes and I drew a box, just a square across here and it gave me a block of colour. I go to shape fill and I go to more fill colours and I change its transparency to 100% and I go to the shape outline and say no outline. So now I have a box here that's transparent and if I right click and hyperlink that I can hyperlink that uh, to a place in this document called slide 6. Now it's currently sitting right on top, it's even sitting on top of my button. So if I just bring slide this across here and click on my button and uh, I want to move that, um, so what I need to do here, I go back uh, home again and go to arrange and bring that button to the front it is now sitting above this invisible frame. It didn't have to do that, but um, you know it could have just sat right over the top. Anyway, so there it is. That's how you create a frame that can cover a slide and link you back that, uh, that no one can see. And that way you can't make a mistake by accidentally clicking on this and going to the next slide instead of going back to your uh, main menu. So there it is. I hope you enjoy it. Um, this is a great um, template. It's one that I've used uh, many times and uh, one that should serve you very well. Thanks a lot. Bye now.